So in Q1, uh, Tesla finally released their uh, their new production and delivery numbers. This is ahead of the earning call, which uh, officially hasn't been scheduled yet. And let me kind of zoom in on here because I want to read this first uh, section of this to you. So Q1 production totaled 34,494 vehicles, a 40% increase from Q4 and by far the most productive quarter in Tesla history. Now we're going to see that more and more because the Model 3 is ramping up so quickly. 24,728 were Model S and X, and 9,766 were Model 3. Again, these are produced. This is a productive quarter. Now, as we saw on Inside EVs, about 8.2 thousand of them have been delivered. Okay, now the Model 3 output increased exponentially, representing a fourfold increase over last quarter. Okay, so the ramp is happening. Yep, there you go. Uh, they talk about the Model T or something else. I'm not interested in that. Uh, this is what I'm interested in here. We were able to double the weekly Model 3 production rate during the quarter by rapidly addressing production and supply chain bottlenecks, including several short factory shuts down to upgrade equipment. Now that is massive because that to me, says that that delivery ramp I'm saying, that S-curve is, we're starting to actually enter that. Um, and so that is really exciting. Now, uh, there is another blurb here about them um, becoming profitable from operations in Q3 as well, which is amazing because, you know, the, just last week we were talking about, are they going bankrupt? And it kind of helped explain why they're not going bankrupt. And it's because they still have cash on hand. But remember those three pipes operations was the big one and because that is you know the buying and selling of the cars and all the costs that go into them if that can turn profitable the sky's the limit for tesla and you know the gigafactory two three will obviously be announced after that new new uh, manufacturing plants so if they can turn uh, an operational profit even though maybe overall the company is still losing money because uh, they're they're investing more than they're making if they can start making money off their op line of operations that will be huge. So big shout outs to Tesla for their Q1 results. I think that this is phenomenal. Um, I did plug these numbers into that delivery ramp so we can kind of go back and take a look at that. You saw the dynamic one. Uh, I did pull together essentially a different one here, which shows, uh, let me see, which shows both models. So what you have here are those actual numbers that, that they've given us as of April 9th. And you can see, um, I just mapped out, one of these is the 5K model where it kind of limits it at 5K. And then the other one is at 10K. I, again, I'm skeptical uh, that they'll hit the 10K, uh, that that's really the limit. I think it might be less than that. I'm happy to be completely wrong. But, you know, just in the, in, in the sense of trying to have a confidence interval or some kind of band to work within here, this is essentially what it's looking like in reality. Um, and and the, the big question is, where does it go from here? Does it keep, you know, uh, uh, climbing to where they hit 10,000? Or does it start to level off closer to 5,000 or somewhere in between? Uh, we'll have to stay tuned and kind of check that out. Now, if this, this based in current reality, if that were to continue, here's what those numbers would look like. So in 2018, if the limit is 5,000 uh, per week that they can produce, that means that they'll produce 177,000, almost 178,000 and uh, 242,000 on the 10K model. So somewhere in between there is likely, is what I'm gonna say we're gonna see for the Model 3. And literally just a week ago, that was under 100,000 for the 5K model. So this exponential growth for the remainder of the year, remember we're still pretty early in the year, is gonna lead to just some giant numbers from Tesla, and this is how they can actually achieve operational profitability. Now, of course, going into the future years, you know, these level off quite a bit and the, the, the margins of error get, get much more dramatic, right? Because you're looking at, you know, a, a 100% difference in, in, in the peak of the, of the, those S curves, of the log growth curve. So you could be looking at 250,000 Model 3s per year or 500,000 Model 3s per year. So these are kind of very, uh, very, very uh, a subject to be wrong because they're so diverse. But somewhere in between here, between 178,000 and 242,000, is currently what the model is showing for the remainder of this year, which means that you know Tesla is, is is just set up for a monster monster year. Now, uh, as a result of all of this, uh, the Model Three is officially now the best selling electric car in the United States, and you can see kind of the numbers broken down here. 
the Model 3 now has yeah, 8.2 thousand that have been delivered. Uh, the Prius Prime there at 6.5, so yeah, it's still a big, but just to be clear, the Prius Prime is a plug-in hybrid. It's not a pure electric, a battery EV uh, as, as you may see it. Um, you know, and then you can see the Model S and Model X are the next two, which are pretty surprising because they're at such a premium price over the next three. Um, so there you have it. Uh, the, the, the Model 3 is the best-selling car in, the best-selling electric car in the United States. And this number is just going to absolutely uh, continue to grow at an exponential rate and just crush every other car on this list. It's going to be... I mean, it's, it's going to be rivaling a, a, a other, you know, non-electric cars. So real excited about that. Congratulations to Tesla again for having a monster quarter. Uh, and, you know, the data here is, is kind of showing that, uh, that, 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 you know, it's working. And, you know, one of the funny things about this, by the way, is that this is just about double what the Chevy Bolt was able to do. 4.4 thousand for the Chevy Bolt and uh, 8.2 thousand for the Tesla Model 3. So...